Yo, Mike. What's up, bro? Interesting week for me. Not so interesting in MMA news lately. Luckily, we had the Tuesday Night Contender Series and PFL coming up. We do. And on this episode, we're going to talk the Contender Series week one, the highlights from last week. We'll touch on week two of the Contender Series. Of course, PFL is in town in Chicago for their second event ever. Looking forward to that. We'll talk about it. And we have four big interviews on this show as well. Well, welcome back, friend of the show, Tyrion Flash, where, for the very first time, nasty Nate Jennerman, Kelvin Tiller, you may remember him, he had that ridiculous knockout from PFL Week 1. Scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. The last interview this week, Matt the Immortal Brown. Give him a huge round of applause. But first, if you guys didn't know, you are listening to the Did You See That Shit Mixed Martial Arts Podcast. I am Mike Strauss, a.k.a. Strauss 21. That is Apollo Taj Mahal. The number one underground comic. So underground, you don't even know who I am. We appreciate all the love and support, guys. Keep it all coming. Whatever platform you're listening to us on, well, just keep on doing it. Like us, love us, retweet us, do all those things, guys, in that order, and your life will probably be a whole lot better. If you want to get more intimate, give us a call, 708-669-4777, or shoot me an email, mike at didyouseethatshit.com. Don't forget our YouTube channel, Missing Time Productions, where all of our content goes. Right, Apollo? Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to try to get a show on there with me and Robin Black watching The Animal Planet. You can give the one-minute breakdown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Quick shout out to Fight Fit Lifestyle. It's more than just a fight company, guys. They have clothing and apparel for whatever you identify with. Man, woman, child, non-binary, whatever the case may be. It's also run by a professional fighter, Chad Ocho Peterson. So you know it's run by a smart dude and the money goes to a good cause. So it's all worth it, guys. Fight Fit Lifestyle. Check them out. FightFitLifestyle.com. All right. Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series Season 2 is off and running. We quickly will touch on some of the highlights. I just want to give a shout out to Christopher Curtis, who, you know, he he lived up to his nickname. He got a, a fantastic highlight reel knockout of Sean Lally, but unfortunately, he did not get a UFC contract, and in doing so, he uh, he decides to call it a career. So just, just a, a kind of a somber moment, but uh, just wanted to give Christopher Curtis his due because... Uh, I don't know. I felt he probably good enough to get a contract. Yeah. You know what the great thing is about uh, MMA? Guys are able to retire and come back. So there is a chance that he could come back. And after that knockout, if somebody drops out in a fight, I could easily see him getting a call from the UFC. Also on the Contender Series Week 1, Alonzo Menafield only needed eight seconds to finish Deshaun Boatwright. He earns himself a UFC contract. And making the most noise out of Week 1, as we figured it would, Greg Hardy earns a developmental deal with UFC. Only needed 57 seconds to KO Austin Lane. It was a uh, pretty violent KO too, man. Yeah, uh, quick question. I'm very confused on these developmental deals. Like, uh, Dana White kind of explained them, but w- what's the whole entail of them? Couldn't tell you. I really? do. I know as much as you do. Okay. Uh, yeah, he, the way he explained it to me was like, they. Uh, the way that I heard Dana White explain them was kind of like, they pay for your training at one of these world-class gyms and bring you up. Uh, I kind of like it, but I, I would definitely like to know more. Somebody uh, on Twitter definitely let me know. More about uh, these developmental deals. Essentially, you know, wh- what they are is, is what, y- what you said. I mean, the, the UFC allocates a certain amount of money, uh, whether you want to break it down per month, per year, for you to train and, and have the best services out there so you can treat it as a job. So you don't have to do what Max Griffin did for all these years and, yeah. you know, have a job to pay your bills, but also find time to train. You know, so so now Hardy can spend all of his time focusing on fighting and doesn't have to worry about paying his bills and this and that. So that it allows you to become a professional fighter. So a football player that made millions and millions of dollars is able now to pay his bills. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm just that that's way too funny to me. Well, that is another way of looking at it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if anybody deserves it, I don't feel he is the one person who deserves a developmental deal. The Contender Series season one produced a lot of very talented UFC fighters, but probably none more, none more famous anyway now <laughs> than uh, Mr. Sean O'Malley. Of course, uh, 
you know, he's everywhere nowadays. He was just on the Rogan podcast. Uh, one of the guys that O'Malley uh, defeated in the UFC, Tyrion Flash Ware. He's a friend of the show. We had a chance to catch up with uh, Mr. Tyrion Ware. And, uh, man, he, he's a, a very smart guy. I really enjoy speaking with Tyrion. And uh, I hope you enjoy the conversation. All right. I want to welcome back Mr. Tyrion Ware to the show. One of my favorite people to speak with. One of the baddest men in the planet. And, uh, man, I wanted to uh, wanted to chat with you, man, because... Uh, you now have something in common with Wonder Boy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about that, man? Did, did you actually have a chance to, to watch last weekend's Till and Wonder Boy fight? Yeah, I watched it, and then, um, you know, and I, and I watched it again. I watched it twice because I don't know. Like, at first, like, when I watched the first time, I was like, maybe I'm just being a little biased because I'm still a little upset about what happened to me. Mm -hmm. and, and I watched it again, and it was a little closer than I originally thought, but I still thought he, I thought it was clear that he won, and, um, there's a lot of people that felt the same way, and it's just, there seems to be an issue, you know, in, not just over there, but in the sport in general, but lately it just seems like it's, you know, a lot of the the guys from the UK, when they fight over there, they're getting, they're getting the favoritism, and I don't think it's, I don't think it's right, it's something that has to be corrected. Yeah, definitely, man, because I, I agree with you. I, I really thought Wonder Boy won the fight. And I think if that happened anywhere else besides the UK, I think that, that Wonder Boy is probably getting that decision. Yeah. Same with you. I think that if your fight happened anywhere else besides, uh, you know, over there, I think that you got your hand raised on that night. Yeah, I mean, I, I 100%, I think so, too, as well. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's unfortunate, man. It's a part of the sport. And hopefully, you know, uh, like with any new sport, the sport is still new. Um, in the beginning, there's always going to be, you know, bumps in the road. And, uh, you know, I'm just hoping that... Uh, that soon before I retire, you know, they start figuring this thing out, man, and start getting it done corrected. Yeah. Has uh, have the UFC, have they came back and offered you uh, any fights yet? Um, no, but um, I mean, looking, you know, they're definitely going to have me back, and um, I'm looking I'm looking to get something soon. Um, and, uh, you know, if somebody falls out, I'm staying ready, and you know, I'll be one of the first options. And my manager is, you know, he's very, uh, uh, he, he talks to Shelby a lot, and um, so I'll be getting something soon. Yeah, I can't wait, man, because as I said, uh, I think that you're one of the most talented and well-rounded fighters in the entire UFC. I mean, you've had a, a hard run. I mean, you, you fought, the, the guys that you've fought are, are super tough. I mean, Cody Stamen, Sean O'Malley, we're starting to see it is a, is a serious contender. And then, of course, uh, Tom DeCoisnay. I mean, all those guys are very tough. You've had a tough draw in the UFC. I'm hoping that you get a more favorable matchup so you could really show what you're made of, you know? Yeah, um... Yeah, I mean, yeah, the first couple of fights were, you know, getting tough, and um, I had some things that I had to correct, and um, I felt like I've done that, and uh, yeah, I mean, it happens for different people, you know, some people come in, and they, and they get right away some favorable matchups, and they're able to go on a win streak, and, you know, get ranked, and stuff like that, and then, you know, so you have other guys sometimes, like, you know, they'll come in, and maybe, maybe lose the first couple, and then get it going, and, um, you know, that's what we're going to do, you know, get it going, you know, get this next one, get this one under my belt, um, and get, you know, get a few more and just get on a roll and then um, start working my way into that top 15, top 10 and, and see where it takes me. For sure. What did you think, uh, or, or rather, what do you think of the UFC deal? Do you think that's going to change things up for the better? Um, I certainly hope so. I mean, it's, it's hard to tell right now. I definitely think it's, I definitely think it's, um, uh, you know, with ESPN, you know, one of the things that I said, it's like ESPN is no, it's a sports channel. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's nothing really else going on on ESPN but sports. With Fox, you have, you know, different TV shows that have been established for, you know, years and years. So the audience that you're getting on, on Fox, you know, sometimes you're getting casuals that might not be really paying too much of attention or really caring about it. They're looking at other shows. Was the people who were tuning into ESPN, even though they might be casuals and might not know the sport of MMA, they're tuned in for a specific reason. They're tuned in to watch sports. So you know, this is if they're watching the MMA for the first time and it's a new sport, they're going to be more inclined to you know be more interested in it and not change the channel when you know MMA comes on. And um, I think it'll just broaden the audience a lot more. And I think just yeah, for the future, you know, I mean, more people watching gives more opportunity for the fighters. And, you know, hopefully just more money as well, too. 
Yeah, that's a good point, man. That's one that I, I really didn't think about too much. But you you uh, you highlighted some very interesting points, man. Definitely. Now, uh, real quick here, you're one of my favorite follows on social media, man. You're absolutely uh, hilarious with with your commentary. Of course, that's on Instagram and Twitter at flash underscore MMA underscore UFC. One of the things I saw you put out the other day was this uh, in regards to the uh, the Pusha T and Drake beef. Uh, what's your feelings on this? Um, I mean, for me, like I grew up with. You know, Pusha T, you know, like, you know, I've been listening to the rap, you know, and, you know, he's one of the guys that, you know, in high school, you know, the song Grinding, everyone was making that beat hit down the desk. And, <laughs> you know, that's something that uh, I've grown up with. And, you know, and, and now, you know, being older, you know, Drake has, you know, been more in the spotlight. Um, I think it's good for hip hop, man. I think it's like the same thing like you see in the May when you have these kind of rivalries, you get people to pay more attention to it. And I think lately, you know, kind of like the new school hip hop, um, it's different, and it's been a lot of pushback, and people, you know, don't like mumble the, the mumble rappers and stuff like that. And then you hear people say, you know, hip hop is dead and other things like that. And it's like, I think with this rivalry, and you have two guys that you know are superstars, you know, in their own rights, you know, kind of going at each other, you know, now you're starting to see, you know, a lot more attention. Like my Twitter feed was just full of this, you know, Drake and Pusha T beef. Like I haven't seen anything, you know. You know, in the last couple of years, like that, that in hip hop, that got that much attention. So, I think it brings uh, attention. I think it's good. Yeah, I agree with you, man. And uh, you're right. There hasn't been anything like that explosive in the hip hop world in quite some time. And uh, I think you're right. I think it is good for hip hop. Both of these artists, Pusha T and Drake, it's not a coincidence they both have albums dropping this summer. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's a if it's a if it's a publicity stunt um, or if it's just something that's natural. Um, but um, it's working, and um, I'm excited about it. I'm excited to see, you know, where it, where it takes them. And, and, you know, I think, you know, both of those guys, you know, it's going to cause the game to elevate. And I think other rappers are going to see that as well, too, in there. You know, if they have, you know, some beef that's been kind of underlying, you know, they're going to, you know, they're going to make sure that they're in the studio. They're going to make sure that they're writing stuff down and have something ready to go in case somebody comes after them. And I think it's just going to elevate everyone else's game. Yeah, I think you're right, man. I think you're right about that. And, and I think that you're right, too, about how it kind of ties into MMA with, uh, you know, the more publicity, the more hype gets people talking. It's good for everybody. Are you going to be watching the fights uh, tomorrow night, uh, the Utica fights? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously the main event, you know, those guys are my weight class. So I'm always trying to watch guys in my weight classes. You know, I envision maybe, you know, fighting one of those guys later in my career. So, um, and it's an exciting matchup. You know, at the same time, I'm a fan of the sport as well, you know. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of even guys in my weight class. You know, I know some people kind of shy away from that. They don't want to be like, oh, you can't be a fan of guys that you're potentially going to fight, you know, because then, you, you know, it's going to mess up your mentality. But, you know, to each his own, I'm different. I can I could be a fan of somebody and, and fight them and show up and have no problem doing it. So, uh, yeah, I'm always watching the fights whenever I can. You guys at 135 pounds, I've been saying this for a long time, you are the gift that keeps on giving. You guys are incapable of having a boring fight, man. So thank you. And uh, I can't wait to see what's next for you, Tyrion, because I, I truly believe that you're one of the best in the world, and I can't wait for you to prove that in the UFC. Thanks, Mike, man. I really appreciate it. Man, I thank you for doing this, and I'd love to have you back on. No problem, man. Anytime. Thanks for having me. There you go. I'm excited to see him fight again. Me too. He's had a rough go, man. You know, Cody Stamen. Tom Dukenwa and uh, Sean O'Malley. I mean, those are three tough dudes, man. They're uh, three guys that people are talking about possibly being the top of that division. Mm -hmm. So for him, and he didn't fight poorly and against... It, no, the Dukenwa fight, he, he won. He, but he, he won. got a bullshit decision, so yeah. it is what it is. So the Contender Series Week 2 rolls along this week, and, and honestly, man, looking at these fights, uh, there's five fights... Honestly, not too much of this excites me. However, that Anthony Hernandez Jordan Wright fight, that is going to be a great fight. You have in Hernandez a guy that's 6 and 0 who's coming off of a victory uh, against a, a gentleman we just spoke with uh, on last uh, the last episode, Brandon All in Allen, who I think is uh, definitely a UFC caliber fighter, but this Anthony Hernandez is a very, very talented dude going against a 9 and 0 Jordan Wright. So someone's O must go. I don't know who it's going to be. I really don't. But uh, this Anthony Hernandez, I wanted to talk a little bit about this fight because this kid is very talented. Have you had a chance to see this kid fight yet? I have seen him fight one time, and it was it was a brief snippet. I just looked up kind of what he was doing. Very, very talented. I'm excited to see him grow because he is so young in the sport, but he has so much talent. Like That's what I noticed big. It's just huge talent and huge confidence. 
He's coming from the LFA promotion, and they just produce so many good fighters. One of those fighters from the LFA, Mr. Nasty Nathan Jennerman. He is another guy that trains at Rufus Sport. I appreciate all those guys, man. Just anytime I, I want some time, they're just willing to do it. This kid is very talented. I, I believe he's UFC bound. And uh, here's a conversation with Nate Jennerman. All right. Well, uh, I'm pleased to have on for the very first time, Nasty Nate Jennerman, 12 and 3, 25 years old, Rufus Sport product. And uh, I think he's one of the best flyweights not currently in the UFC. What's going on, man? I said flyweights. I meant I went featherweight. I'm looking right at 145 pounds. I don't know what my problem is. <laughs> If you made flyweight, that'd really be a story, huh? Oh man, <laughs> you're six that foot, would be right? A struggle. So you're six foot tall. Yeah, six foot tall. Man, the fact that you even make 145 is incredible. Yeah, you know, I it was skinny when we get there, but it comes off really easy. So the weight cuts are still what I want them to be. They're not too hard. My wife helps out with my weight cuts so much. How so? Uh, she cooks all my meals. Um, she's, she's always the one asking me like what I all ate that day, what I'm getting in my body tells me if I need to have a little more, tells me if I had a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Is, uh, does your wife have a background in nutrition or anything like that? Um, she doesn't have like a degree or anything, but she's done a lot of like studying and she works at a, uh, acupuncture clinic. So she gets a lot of like, uh, she talks to her boss a lot who does have a degree. That's very cool, man, and that, that seems like a, uh, a resource that is available to you that a lot of other fighters really don't have the, the benefit of, you know? Right, absolutely. You've won seven of your last eight fights, man. You're on a tear. You, uh, you recently just competed June 1st. It only took you 48 seconds to get the submission choke win over Kevin Crew, man. What's next for you? Um, you know, we kind of, I just got to the gym yesterday and talked to Duke a little bit. Um, you know, we might be sitting through the summer just to see if anything falls through with like the UFC or anything. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, if the UFC doesn't call, we'll be ready to, um, you know, just beat up the next guy that signs that contract on the other side. So we'll be ready to go September. I think LFA is coming back to this area that I've been fighting in. So if the UFC doesn't call by then, we'll be ready to go again for LFA. Yeah, LFA is uh, is one of the, the better regional promotions, man. They've done a, a fantastic job at building stars. I think that you're the next guy to really uh, that's really going to break through there. Of course, you know, you train on a daily basis at Rufus Sport. I get to talk to a lot of Rufus Sport guys, man, and almost every single one of them to the man mentions you as one of their main training partners and the kid to watch out for next. What, what does that really mean to you, man, only being 25 and, and really having the the respect of your peers yeah you know it means a lot um i'm always trying to help everybody with their fight camps as well um you know i've had the opportunity to really help out with paul felder and anthony pettis a lot over the last two years so it's been it's been huge and now jared gordon has joined our team mm -hmm. um so he's another 45er and yeah i mean me and uh jordan griffin are making the come up on the next few prospects that should be signed and rafan's thoughts i mean another guy that should be signed like right away yeah it's just amazing what you guys are able to uh, just continually to churn out there at, at rufus board it's truly impressive man uh you know you're only 25 years old what made you get into fighting um so when i was in high school i watched it a lot and uh i had learned that there was a uh, gym right in my hometown here in sheboygan and uh you know i just went one night to try it out and i ended up staying for three hours and i fell in love with it um, I had my first amateur fight while I was still in high school, and then I turned pro at 20, and now, uh, you know, I, I, I can't even, like, it's insane the in fighter I was when I first turned pro to now, or even, like, last year to now. I feel like I've really made the biggest strides in my MMA game in the last year. Where do you think you've made the biggest gains at? What area? Um, I would say mentality is a big area that I really changed. And then, man, I, really, honestly, everywhere. I, I work all year round, and I'm constantly in the gym trying to get better at everything. So um, my striking's gotten a lot better. Uh, my jiu-jitsu's getting way better. And my wrestling has been increasing a lot lately, too. So I'm really making strides all around to be the most well-rounded fighter I can be. You're somewhat of uh, known as a uh, as a quick starter. I mean, as I said, a full 48 seconds it only took you in, in your most recent fight. But you've been known to uh, 
to finish guys quickly, you don't get paid by the hour, let's say. Is that something that you, you stress or is it just, you know, been good luck for you so far? Um, it's definitely something I'm always looking for. Um, I, the, the way I think about it is the longer that I'm in that cage, um, you know, the, the better chance there is of him hitting me with something that can knock me out or putting me in trouble. So the faster I can get out of there, the better for me. Um, you know, this weekend on Friday night was my fifth first round finish. So I'd always like to keep adding to that stat. First round finishes are the best. Oh, yeah, everybody, uh, I mean, fans and employers alike like those. So that's always a good thing to keep in your pocket there. Now, um, the featherweight division is one of the more exciting ones, I believe. You know, Max Holloway is currently sitting on top of the throne in the, in the UFC, but the UFC is not really the only game in town anymore. You know, Bellator is really making moves, and PFL, I'm really excited for what they're doing. They got a couple of uh, killers at, at their featherweight division, Andre Harrison, Lance Palmer. Have you entertained the idea of Bellator or the PFL, or is it just you, you got, like, tunnel vision for the UFC? Um, yeah, I mean, PFL came to the gym, and they were looking at a couple guys. Um, they were, I, I think they were an option, um, but we, we, we've got our eyes set on the UFC. Um, you know, once once you're the champ in the UFC, I mean, you're pretty much the best in the world, and that's what I'm trying to be is the best in the world, so I'm going to try to compete with the best guys. The UFC 145 weight class is very big, but outside of the top 15, I don't see a lot of contenders in that division. Yeah, outside of the top 15, it does kind of get, it's it's open, and I definitely The drop-off is big. It is, it is. It's pretty substantial after that 15, and I think that you are a UFC quality fighter. I definitely think that um, you were going to be out fighting on the big show sooner rather than later. That's for sure, man. I mean, you got everything. You know, you you have the the ability. You're improving. You train at one of the best camps, and uh, you're an exciting fighter, man. So I can't wait to to see what's next for you. Whether it be another LFA fight or whether it is you know a last minute fight uh, on the UFC. That's what we've seen lately with uh, with highly touted prospects we've seen the ufc offer them these last minute fights was that something you'd be opposed to or or do you want a full camp on your debut oh i'm totally cool taking a short notice fight if that's what it falls down to um i've always been one to um stay ready so you don't have to get ready Mm um i've always like i said i'm always in the gym so i just had five fights in the last 13 months so i'm always ready to go five fights in 13 months and you're looking for more yes sir <laughs> to be 25 again man well Nate, <laughs> I, I truly believe that you're one of the best uh, 145ers that isn't uh, fighting on the big show right now man and i can't wait to see what's next for you the floor is yours man if you'd like to shout out your sponsors anything you'd like brother all right thank you very much i appreciate that yeah you know first i want to thank god um you know just always putting all these blessings in my life um you know with the people that i train with the people around me you know, it's all a blessing. Other than that, you know, just got to always thank uh, Combat Corner for helping me or cooking me up with the best gear. Raw Dog here in Sheboygan. They're always showing a lot of support. Champ Sports Bar in Sheboygan. Weiss Brothers, Three Sheeps, Greasy Spoon, all uh, Sheboygan area. Um, you know, I like to support local and they've been supporting me. Advanced Spine Care and Wellness, Pure Body Balance, Healthy Living Acupuncture. I've got a really good medical team behind me helping me through any little injuries that I get. Uh, Grip Mouth Guards, keeping my uh, teeth in my mouth where I like it. (laughs) SDG, my management company. Um, You know, obviously, shout out to Rufus Ford, all the guys down there. They've been a huge help with everything. Um, The coaches holding down for all my teammates. 1740 Beer Bum, keeping my beard on point and (laughs) <laughs> you know, as as I said before, my wife, she helped me out with everything. So without her, this stuff isn't even possible. I hear you, man. We all need a good woman behind us. That's for sure, man. Absolutely. Well, Nasty Nate, gentlemen, I, I truly believe that you're one of the best men, and we're going to be seeing you on the big show uh, very soon, man, 12 and 3. And if it is LFA next, I know that you're going to uh, continue to knock him down there too, brother. All right. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Take care, man. I look forward to speaking with you uh, in the future. All right. Talk to you later. There you go. You know what I love about this show and I love about these interviews hmm. is guys like him who I don't really know much about. You get a chance to speak with them. I get to hear what they're saying. And I sometimes get a chance to speak with them. And now I'm excited to see guys like him fight uh, and watch their career. 
So, Paulo, there's no MMA hour this week. It's the first time in, I think, like nine years that there's been no MMA hour on Monday, uh, you know, Monday or Tuesday, depending on holidays. But we don't have it at all this week. It kind of feels a little bit, uh, I don't know, there's like a void in my heart. Pour some out for the homie, and then now let's take advantage. Listen, there's no MMA hour out there anymore. It's just us. Well, it's, in it's, a couple weeks, there's going to be a new uh, new go around. Uh, they're, they're working on it. They're on ESPN. We don't care about them. ESPN <laughs> Plus. They're on ESPN Plus. No one has that right now. I do. It's, it's kind of like Tidal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we listen to Spotify. Listen, guys, if you are sad because there is no MMA hour, guess what? Did, did you see that shit, boys? Gotcha. Come here every day. Any day, we don't care. We got all our podcasts up, all our interviews up. You can listen to us all the time. We're going to be doing live streams a lot more. Things are going to be popping. And if you are just sad that Ariel Hawani isn't here, I got a guy with a big nose here who's going to take <laughs> take his place. He's about me. <laughs> yep, I'm talking about my boy Mike Strauss. So guess what? I am sad too. The MMA hour is gone. But hey, I'm an opportunist. I see there's a hole. I'm willing to fill it. PFL 2 is this week. I'm stoked. It's in Chicago, and there's really good fights, man. Let's quickly talk about the card. I don't want to... There's 13 fights, so we're not yeah. going to talk about all of them. Just a couple here that really uh, really pique my interest. There's only one fight that actually piques my interest. That is the main event, I believe. Well, yeah. technically, there's no main event, but it's just, the, the last bout of the night, I think. You're talking about the yeah. Lewis Firmino and Will Brooks fight. This is very interesting for me because, in my opinion, I thought Will Brooks was done. I still think he is. After his UFC. Yeah, he yeah. didn't look good in the UFC. No, he didn't. And I don't know what it was because this is a guy who beat... Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler twice. He looked Michael, great in Bellator. Yeah, he looked like a world beater. And now he goes to the UFC and looks like the world's beating him. Mm -hmm. So I want to see what he does in PFL because his weight, the lightweight division is no joke. You have some serious, serious fighters there. Who do you like? Louis Firmino or Will Brooks, though? I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Louis Firmino. Um... I don't know if Will Brooks still has it, man. You know, uh, I've I've always liked Will Brooks. Can't say the same about him. For whatever reason, he doesn't like me. He's <laughs> one of two fighters that has blocked me on Twitter. No one blocks me yet, and I talk mad stuff. Uh, well, here's the thing: I don't. T I'm not disrespectful to any fighter ever, but I know. somehow Rampage Jackson blocked <laughs> me, and uh, Will Brooks. I don't get it. But I'm hoping after being able to speak with Will Brooks this week. Uh, uh, face to face I'm hoping I can get him to unblock me because I don't understand why he blocked me so we'll, we'll smooth it over if it's something I did you know I'll, I'll man up to it but uh, you know all personal feelings aside man I mean I don't disrespect the guy I don't hate the guy I actually think he's going to win the fight I think he's going to do it pretty convincingly I don't think he's done I just think uh, you know some guys it's hard to you know as in life in any profession it's hard to go from being the best at something to being the worst at something. Do you remember when you were in eighth grade, you're on top of the world, and then you go into high school and you're a freshman again? I was the captain of the football team. Well, you're you're the you're <laughs> definitely not the norm. And then you work your way through high school and you become the shit, you know, and you're a senior. And then you go to college again and you're a freshman. And then you got to, it's just so, you know, as in life, it, it's just the cycle. And I think that when he got to the UFC, it might've just been too much. But I think that uh, Will Brooks has not done and I think that he will win. Also on the PFL2 card this week, Chris Wade, former UFC fighter, going against Nathan Schulte. That's going to be a very fun fight. I'm going to go Chris Wade. I'm going with Chris Wade, too. He's the only one that I'm actually familiar with. No offense. It's just I've seen him fight before. Kayla Harrison making her professional mixed martial arts debut against Brittany Elkin. Now, there is no tournament for the women this year. This is just a one-off match. Kayla Harrison, I think she is the star that PFL needs. I, I think she is going to be phenomenal. I'm going to pick her to win this fight. I only know her by name. <laughs> That's really it. I've not seen her fight yet. But this is what's great about the PFL. Well, no one's seen her fight yet. Yeah. Oh, this is her first fight? First professional fight, yes. Oh, I'm very excited now. She is a two-time Olympic judokan. She won the gold medal twice. She is a two-time Pan American champion, and she won Worlds in 2010. She was the oh. training partner of Ronda Rousey. Well, I hope she didn't get Ronda Rousey striking. Uh. <laughs> she may, Standing next to Ronda, she makes Ronda look like a nine-year-old girl. For real? She's yoked. Oh, I am excited. She is the only woman that could, I think, beat Chris Cyborg. Really? 
We'll see how her striking is, but she can outgrapple her. Okay, so by you saying that, I have very high hopes. I'm going look to at watch. Her, look at some. Go check out some of her wrestling after the show. I'm definitely going to do that. And you know or, how you big know, of a, to her. You know what I mean. Her you, her you, competing. You know how big of a fan I am of grappling. Mm-hmm. Also on the card, Brian Foster, Ranzi in a gym. That should be a fun fight. I'm really excited for Shlamanan Rama. He is a former heavyweight fighter down to light heavyweight now. I've been a fan of this guy for a long time, man. Back when he was undefeated, he's now a 10 and 3. He's going against a Bellator vet here in Brendan Halsey. This is going to be a slugfest, a barn burner. I mean, mark my words, that fight is going to be just balls to the wall chaos. Well, the craziest thing about that fight is that you're bringing a heavyweight down. Mm-hmm. And if he can carry that power, it's going to be it's going to be chaos. Vinny Magalhaes, you probably know from the jiu-jitsu world, he is a world beater, just to use your word, going against Jamie Abdullah. That should be interesting. And then uh, the, the first fight of the night I find very interesting, man, because the two very talented guys are kicking off this night. Former UFC fighter and ultimate fighter winner, Efron Escadero, going against Jason High. I mean, this is the first fight of the night. This is going to be a good card. That this is definitely a really great card. If you guys aren't watching the PFL, I don't know what's wrong with you. You are seeing some of the best fights happening. And for our Chicago listeners, man, I saw on Ticketmaster, there's plenty of tickets still available here for this event. Thursday night, the Chicago Theater. Tickets as low as 8 bucks. Come on. Guess who's going? Right now, I want to welcome Kelvin, the mama's boy, Tiller, to the show. My favorite moments from PFL won last week, man. Congratulations. Huge win, brother. Thank you very, very much, man. It was a, it was a blessing being there. Thank you. That knockout came from nowhere. I mean, literally, you were on the you were on the ground. The referee stood you up, and uh, I looked away for a moment. And the next thing I knew, you were uh, looking over Alan Carr. And when they played the replay, Jesus, man! I mean, Kelvin, that's power, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've been practicing that punch and just the timing. I knew he kind of threw an overhand baseball right, not real technical. And uh, I just timed it perfectly. I got the best reflexes in the game for a heavyweight, and I just went from there. So you used to be a light heavyweight. You're coming up to heavyweight. I wanted to ask you how that transition's been. I actually started at middleweight. My whole Bellator career was at middleweight, but I was missing weight, probably about two pounds, no more than three pounds. And uh, they eventually kicked me out. And it just been injuries, man. I've just been getting injured, and just some of the worst injuries and the weight. You know, sitting around eating, feeling sorry for myself. The weight just started coming on, and I'm heavyweight now, so we'll go from there. Well, you look great, man. Uh, you're only 27 years old. You're in a three-fight winning streak, and the, one of the things I really like about the PFL is that it, the, this tournament bracket style, it, it's kind of refreshing, and not that you would, but certain fighters do turn down fights, but in this model, you don't really have an option to do that. You just got to fight whoever's next. Is that what you really like about this format, too? Yes, sir. I do. Uh, I've never been into turning down fights. Uh, the only time I ever had to turn down fights, I was injured. So the opponent change and uh, the last minute thing, the last minute opponent change that happened to me really wasn't a big deal for me. Uh, but I, I like to fight everybody. I believe I'm the best. I believe I'll win a million dollars. I believe I'll win it next year and the year after. And so there's no uh, turning down fights for me. So, yes, I do like that. A million dollars, man. Uh, what are you going to do with that million dollars? I know Bass asked you, uh, you know, he was asking everybody, uh, you know, after after the fights. But, I mean, really, have you sat down to think about what you're going to do with a million dollars? Because, that, dude, that's life-changing money. Yes, sir. It's life-changing money. I would just uh, pay off my debts. Um, I would like to open a barbershop and a gym. Uh, I'm not too uh, flashy of a guy. I like to take care of my kids, take care of my family. And uh, But, yeah, like I say, a million dollars just the beginning of it. We'll come back. We'll win it two times, three times, and I like to retire early. I know that. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> so there was a lot about the, the last minute, uh, the, the change of opponents, the heavyweights. There was a big shuffling of that because of the, the commission there in New York. I know you didn't say that really didn't affect you too much at all, but was, was it just a lot of unusual chaos that you're not really used to the day before? I mean, how was all that? Uh, man, actually, my amateur career, that was pretty much – how we fought an amateur. We, we, a guy, uh, he'll uh, back out of the fight in, you know, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours before the fight, and we just, we'll get in there and we'll still do what we got to do. So that's never been a problem to me. I've been, I've been conditioned that way for a long time. I never wrestled, uh, so I don't, I don't, I know wrestlers say so they don't um, know who they're fighting uh, until the day of, but that, that wasn't me. So, but it's just a mentality. I think I can beat everybody. So it really wasn't a big, uh, a big uh, issue to me. 
Yeah, that's uh, just how things were done back then. So you mentioned that a little bit earlier, man. You're a Bellator vet. You're, you're actually a Shamrock FC vet, too. I'm, uh, being in the Midwest, I'm very familiar with Shamrock. I wanted to ask you, how did you enjoy your time fighting for Shamrock? Oh, uh, man, Jesse Finney, he was, he was one of the guys that believed in me big time. So I'll always have love for Jesse Finney. Um, he just had issues finding me fights around here. Everybody say I'm UFC caliber. And a lot of guys were like overpriced themselves, so to make it seem like they wasn't turning down fights, and they made it seem like Jesse Finney didn't want to pay enough. We all know that the local shows are a budget, and and so uh, I mean he was just a real good guy to I me. Mean, he always took good care of me. Um, he just can give me the fights that I needed to get to the big show. But uh, I have nothing but good things to say about him and the organization. Have you had a chance to to speak with uh, Ray Seffo, like just sit down and really talk with him? And because uh, he is just truly, uh, he's a breath of fresh air when it comes to uh, the sport, I believe. Um, I have not got to sit down and talk to him. Uh, I'm, I'm sure my manager has said uh, something to him, but as far as me, no, sir. Um, I like Ray Seffo, man. I watch a lot of his old fights. Uh, kind of look up to the guy. Um, but no, I haven't got down to talk to him, though. So I don't talk to him. Have you had a chance to look at the, uh, the the other field of heavyweights? I know Alex Nicholson had a very impressive win with that, that flying knee up there. In my opinion, the, that moment and your moment were the two jaw-dropping moments of the entire evening. But have you had a chance to kind of size up your competition? Alex Nicholson, he had a, a good performance. But I see him get kicked three times in the leg by a guy that weighs 227 pounds. And if you get kicked by me, you won't, you won't be walking. If you get kicked more than two or three times. So Alex Nicholson is not a... Um, I don't think he is uh, my, my my big issue. I don't think I have real competition in a, in, in the tournament. Like skill wise, anything's possible. Anybody can get knocked out. I understand that, but I didn't see nobody outstanding that has really got me shifting my shoes. So uh, re- really, no, I haven't seen nobody fight besides what I've seen at the shows. But I, I believe I'll win it. I know I'll win it. Uh, I'm, I'm very confident in that. Well, I appreciate your time, man. Uh, PFL2 is coming up here. Are you going to be uh, in Chicago for that event? I will not be in Chicago. My my next fight is uh, July 19th in the back of New York. Uh, and that's at uh, Nassau, right? Uh, yes, sir, it is. Yeah, it's going to be a great time, man. Well, uh, I look forward to speaking with you again, man. Uh, you, the floor is yours if you'd like to shout your sponsors. Uh, anything you like, Kelvin? Um, I'd like to uh, shout out my manager, Brian Butler, and my team, MCA, uh, Thatcher's Training Center. Uh, PSL for giving me an opportunity, and I said, big man. I appreciate your time so much. I look forward to speaking with you again, and good luck with your next fight, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Bye. Some fight announcements. Jimmy Rivera, he gets a quick turnaround against John Dotson, UFC 228. I really like that fight. Nico Montagna, she is finally ready to defend her flyweight title. She says September 8th is the date, and she wants Valentino Shevchenko. Ooh, that's a, that's a big call out. Our friend Violent Bob Ross is going to make his official UFC debut against Richie Schmullen at the Ultimate Fighter 27 finale. Congrats to our, our friend Violent Bob Ross. Hopefully we can get him back on the show before that. We had a chance to be with a lot of people, Apollo, and uh, I, I truly appreciate all the time that, that every fighter gives us, but uh, some are special than others. And whenever you have a chance to speak with Matt the Immortal Brown, it's always one of those times. Such was this case. Here's the conversation with Matt the Immortal Brown. I want to welcome back Matt Brown to the show. One of the best in the world at 170. Shit, one of the best in the world, period. It's been a while, man. What's going on? Uh, not much, man. Just uh, hanging out in these Norbert Tech boots right now, trying to get these get this knee back to normal again. How is it going with your knee? Uh, it's going good. I, I feel real good. I feel like I could train today, actually, but uh, you know I'm not allowed to, so I have to be disciplined and hold myself back. How long are you uh, are you mandated to stay away from the hard training for? I think I'm not allowed to box until about five, six months. Oh, wow. And then, yeah, and I won't be real training until, like, all-out training. Right? It's about nine to nine months, oh, probably wow. seven to nine months, I think, total. Okay, so I know that you're like you're you're like a crazy madman when it comes to training and sports psychology. So have you been reading, like, a, a lot more books lately or to keep your mind at ease? Oh, yeah, yeah, which I, I read a lot anyway, but... Certainly been uh, reading a lot more lately. Yeah. Anything? Uh, anything good that you could recommend? Um, I'm rereading the book Musashi, which is probably the greatest book I've ever read. My favorite book I've ever read. So I'm reading it again for the second time, and it's about a thousand pages. So you know, it's a pretty intense book. Was Musashi? 
Musashi, yeah, like My Mary Musashi. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to. I don't. I've never read that, but I'm a huge reader, so I'm gonna have to check that out for sure. Oh uh, yeah, probably. I don't know. It's like the Gone with the Wind of Japan. You know, like every single person there has watched the movies or stories about it. Like it's a you know just a common story over there. Very cool. Your last fight, man, against Diego Sanchez, that elbow that you delivered, I, I, I still think that's one of the just picture-perfect SKOs ever, man. When, when you landed that, did it feel as good as it looked? <laughs> um, actually, I didn't even feel it. So <laughs> I, you, you probably can't. I guess I've watched it myself. You can't really tell from the uh, uh, the, the video, but I couldn't even tell. I, I didn't realize that I'd knocked him out. I kind of thought that he was going for a shot or something, like going for an ankle or something. I was like, <laughs> I was like, is he really going to do an ankle pick? Um, but then, I, you know, the referee pushed me back pretty quickly. So uh, that, was, that was a good thing, a good ref that night. Your, uh, your fight with Carlos Condit, that was supposed to happen at Fox 29. Of course, that got scrapped. But is that a fight that you'd like to see run back? Absolutely. I mean, I think uh, all the fans would still love to see me and Carlos fight sometime. I think uh, we have a great style matchup. And I think that uh, it's a, definitely a fan-friendly fight to, uh, uh, people would love to see. I was really bummed out when when that fight uh, fell through because, as you said, man, both you and Carlos, two legends, and both you guys bring your A game every single time. Now, speaking of bringing your A game, Matt, I mean, you're a guy that we know what we're gonna get as fans when when you're in there. You know, you give every ounce of your being every time you're in in the octagon in a cage. When you see guys miss weight, does that? I mean, does that really piss you off? Uh, I wouldn't say it pisses me off. Um... I mean, I don't like. I don't think they should. I, I think the rules should be a lot stricter. You know, more than just losing a little bit of your purse or something. Um, I think we need to do something that makes it. Because uh, I think a lot. Well, I think I guess. Let me start over. You know, I think a lot of guys go ahead and accept it and say, "Hey, you know, I want to uh, save myself for the fight rather than cut this weight." Uh, they're they're willing to accept the consequences, and I think that was uh, a lot of the same with like the steroid use. Uh, particularly a few years ago, not so much now. I think uh, USADA has done, they've done a great job with that. But, yeah, people would just accept the consequences rather than, uh, you know, trying to follow the rules uh, because the consequences just weren't strict enough. And um, so, yeah, I, I think if they just make it uh, less worth the while, I mean, you know, Darren Till missed and, you know, still wins the fight. Or Mackenzie Dern, she missed big, still miss, uh, still uh, got the fight and got the win, and you know now she's going to move up in the rankings and move on. Um, you know it's it's just not fair. Yeah, there's only been one fighter, and that just happened in this last card. Uh, Jillian was the only fighter that actually beat a fighter that missed weight, so they have a clear advantage when they miss weight, whether they do it on purpose or not. It's still an advantage. Uh, of course, you know a guy that you know very well, a guy that you beaten before, just fought last weekend, uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. What did you think about the, the way that those two? It was like a physical chess match the whole fight. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't able to watch the fight. I was on vacation, so well, not really vacation, just out of town. I was camping and fishing up in the mountains with the kids, so I didn't get to watch the fight. I'll probably watch it this weekend sometime, um, catch up, and probably watch the whole card. Hopefully. Yeah, it was a good card, man, and, and I envy you, man. If I could have got a got a chance to get away for the holiday with the family, I would have been all over that. So, <laughs> man, that's where it's at. As you get older, uh, you know, I'm 37 now, so you know, family. That's what it's all about, you know. For sure, and yeah, especially the age my kids are at. It's not, I'm always happy to take them up there, and they're just as happy to be on the boat or on the water, catching a fish, than they are being on an Xbox. And hopefully, I can keep it that way because uh, that's a, a huge problem in our society i think did we agree on that man i mean my daughter's 12 and it's just so hard prying her away from that computer sometimes you know <laughs> absolutely i mean i mean it's hard prying ourselves away from our computers and phones right so mm, it's true I, I can only imagine being a 12 year old kid with you know uh different completely different outlook that grew up with it it, man, you know, when, when you and I were growing up, it was just a different world. You know, I was just talking to my wife about this. I mean, you, you know, I, I didn't even get a Nintendo until, what, like 92. I was already 13 years yep. old. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I used to play outside all the time, and, and kids just don't experience, you know, most of the kids don't get to experience what we did growing up, you know? Yeah, and I'm, I'm fortunate. My kids, they uh, they enjoy playing outside, and they they have creative little minds, and they keep themselves busy, and they love to read, and they love to write and draw and stuff like that. So... Uh, um, it tells me that I'm 
doing the right thing for them, teaching them the right way. No doubt, man. Well, you're a great father, you're a great family man, and you're a great fighter. I, I can't wait till you get you, you get the, the knee healthy and get back in there, man. On Twitter and Instagram, you can be found at I am the immortal. Uh, the floor is yours, man. If you'd like to shout out your sponsors, anything you'd like. Yeah, for sure. You know, check out my fitness equipment company, Immortal Combat Equipment. Uh, um, you got to thank Muscle Farm, man. You know, we're building a good thing out here, uh, coming out to L.A. a lot, and we're building a great team out here of fighters. Uh, with Joe Schilling and Jason Manley and me all coaching. Um, man, you know, we got a great thing going, so uh, major props to them for helping out. Boy, thank you for your time, man. It's always a pleasure, man, and I can't wait for you to get back there because truly, man, you're one of the most exciting fighters uh, to watch, bar none. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Take care, man. There you go. I am such a fan of him, and I really want to see him fight again. <laughs> yeah, he was supposed to have that Carlos Condit fight, and it fell through. That's a fight that he wants again. Hopefully, we all get it. You know, I think Matt Brown could be one of those guys that fights, you know, into his early 40s and fights, you know, very well into his early 40s. I, I think uh, he definitely could. And, and one of the big thing is because MMA years kind of add up right on him mm -hmm. where he could be hitting his MMA knowledge prime right now. And the fact that he's coaching as well really has, you can see, elevated his skill. For sure. Does a walrus or a rhinoceros have a bigger wiener? How do we get on this? Yeah.